We have been very fortunate at Natalist in terms of our funding. So Hallie Teco is our lead founder. She spent over a decade in the investment space, um, particularly healthcare investment, has really been a pioneer in the digital health space. Throughout her career, she built really great relationships with funders and venture capital firms, then went off and also did her own private angel investing. But because of that, when we were trying to get funding, pitching was pretty easy for us. And and I don't I don't mean to belittle what we did in those days because securing the funding, whether you have a relationship or not, is still a feat. The investors have really hard questions and they have returns that they're looking for. So it wasn't an open and closed situation by any means, but when I think about the fact that 2% of startup are, are female founded who get venture capital, I know that for us that those relationships really did matter. So I think that we were, were fortunate in that way and I think it's important to name that because there are more female founders who need to be backed by VCs um, who are not receiving that funding and it's important to continue to call this message out that Natalist had existing relationships that we were able to leverage but that's not always the case for for black founders and, and for female founders it's just not always the case. We actually our first offer for acquisition came in 2020 in the, the phase one of COVID I call it. <laughs> it was an okay offer, um, but as Hallie and I were really trying to stabilize the team, we didn't think that it was best for the team nor the brand at the time because we had just launched in retail and though we were in the middle of this pandemic, we thought it would be short-lived at the time and we were like, we've got so much potential and room to grow here. We declined that offer, but what I learned in that process of just the initial conversations was about some of the data that a potential acquirer would need, some of those things that they would call for early on in terms of like information they needed about our business to make sure that, you know, it was in fact something they wanted to buy. So that was like, I would say June of 2020 and we declined. And then fast forward to July of 2021, we are being courted by a couple of companies and it was exciting and overwhelming because number one, it's confidential. So Hallie and I couldn't tell anybody. So we have this like big, huge thing happening behind the scenes that we're entertaining, we're preparing documents for, but we can't share out with the team yet because we have to keep focus. We have to keep the team driving to the goals that we set for 2021. And we don't want people to get distracted by something that actually might not happen. Because in that courtship process, it's, it is like courting a spouse. You might marry them, you might not. And that was exactly the case. Like we were dating, we were dating <laughs> essentially a couple of companies and you kind of show up with this idea. I think, well, I did, I showed up at like, Wow, they want us, this is great. This is gonna be like really easy. But what it really is, is like you have to sell your company all over again. It's just like with investors, except the transaction is different. The end relationship ends up being a little bit different, but you have to sell yourself. So we had to sell our company again. Like, and when I say sell, I mean, we had to sort of say all the things that we were good at, what our customers were loving about us, share what our sales were, which were, you know, numbers we never shared before. Um, and all of this, of course, is under NDAs, but we, we had to share those things. And it's really a vulnerable moment because all the things that you've held really close about your business, you have to begin opening up about and you have to begin being really transparent because on the other side of that, they're giving you cash. They need to know what's under the hood. And so it was exciting. It was kind of overwhelming in those early days or in those days of the acquisition where we were being 
recorded more than anything it was really affirming to feel like we made something good enough to buy we made something that not just our customers were finding value in but potential acquirers were seeing as a real value add to their portfolio and that they wanted to continue investing in this idea. So that was so affirming that what we sort of came out and said about the brand, that women need this, that women deserve better health care, that women deserve better products, products that feel good to use, that meet them where they are, that that was resonating with people beyond our circle of friends.